Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefined Horizons. This is another short training video that I'm doing today. And I'm going to uh, walk you through an example that came up uh, on a land title survey we were working on a couple months ago. And it has to do with an easement that was way too long. <laughs> and so one of my LSITs was, was working with me on this survey, and uh, it was a land title survey. And we had this storm drain easement that was way too long. And he couldn't figure out why it happened. And so I sat down with him and we started looking at it and I, I figured out why this happened. And so I wanted to do a video so that we could we could teach others. And uh, if you, in case you guys run across this, you, you know what's going on. And then um, also, so when you're writing easements, you don't create the, the, the same type of problem. So here's the situation we had. We had two parcels next to each other. Okay, and we were surveying, I think we were surveying parcel one. Okay, and there was a there was a concrete V ditch, drainage ditch on our property that ran onto the neighboring property. And so we were mapping the easements for the title survey, and we pulled this easement document for the storm drain easement, and we got it cogoed and realized that it went way past our property. So it started on our west line, but it went way past our property over here into the neighboring parcel. And so my LSIT, to, to his credit, started asking questions. He said, you know, I don't understand. This doesn't make sense. Why would this easement run onto the neighbor's property? And it was a good question. And so here's what we figured out. <clears throat> this parcel over here was actually owned by the drainage district. There was a river over here, and this parcel, this ditch drained off into the river. Okay, this parcel was owned by the drainage district. And this property line between one and two... This property line right here between one and two was really hard to locate on the ground, just the way the deeds were written. Okay, it was just a, it was a tough line to locate the way the deeds were written. And so here's what I think happened, and I explained this to my LSIT. So this easement happened to be in favor of the drainage district. Okay, so what they did is they didn't know where this property line was, and they wanted to make sure they covered all of the ditch that was on this property that was that wasn't owned by the drainage district, and so. They just wrote, they wrote the easement to cover all of the physical ditch, okay, and they knew that when this person granted the easement to the drainage district, by law, they weren't going to include anything that wasn't their property. So they just had them grant the whole thing to the drainage district. Now, I understand why that happened in this particular case. Let me explain why that is a bad idea, okay, if you are the owner granting the easement, it's a bad idea. I want to explain why. And then I want to explain what you can do as an alternative if you're in this situation where you have kind of a fuzzy property line, but you still need to grant an easement. Okay, here's why it's a bad idea for the for the owner. Because technically this owner granted an easement over property he didn't own, okay, or that she didn't own. At some point in the future, he or she could be liable for that, right? So you don't want to do this. You don't want to grant an easement over property you don't own. Okay, that's a bad idea. So whoever drafted this easement document, they weren't looking out for the interests of the, of the landowner here that was granting the easement. Okay, but what if you are in a situation where you need to cover all of a physical feature like a ditch that's on a particular property, but you're not sure exactly where the property line is? Okay, well, you have two choices. Your first choice is do a survey and figure out where the property line is. Now, not everybody wants to pay for that, and I understand it. So you could use the same method with, a, with one tweak that would make this safer for the property owner granting the easement. So what you do is you still describe this strip that's way too long, but then what you do is you put language in the grant, in the land description that says, I grant Landon Blake grants to the drainage district all of the following described parcel lying west of this property line. Or... I, Landon Blake, a grant to the drainage district, all of the following described parcel lying within my parcel. You use some kind of limiting language to indicate that your intent is only to convey as much of this strip as you own, right? That protects the, the grantor of the easement, and it also makes clear for some surveyor 80 years from now that's going to go in to do the retracement, he'll understand that this line was intended to limit the easement. Without putting together kind of the, the contextual information here, that wasn't clear in this particular easement that we were reviewing. So why was this easement way too long? It was way too long because they didn't know where this property line was. They wanted to make sure they covered all of the ditch that was on this parcel. 
and they didn't include the property, the proper limiting language in the land description or the conveyance to the drainage district. So don't make that same mistake.